Hi everybody. It's one o'clock almost, I think. Hello and welcome to our live feed today. And today we're going to get to meet one of our resident ambassador animals. Can you see who I have here? This is Cornelius. Let me bring him a little bit closer. Can you guys see Cornelius? What kind of animal do you think Cornelius is? That's right, he is a snake, he's a reptile. Cornelius has been with us at the Marine Science Center since 2018. He came to us in November of 2018 and he was probably about three to four years old. So we estimate right now he's about five years old. He's really cool, isn't he? Yes, he is um, about 55 inches long. Look at this, ooh, he's really great, isn't he? So let's tell you a little bit about Cornelius and what kind of snake he is. He is a Florida corn snake or red rat snake. He's found in all of the counties in Florida, which is really cool. He's very abundant here. He's a snake that's very slender. That means he's quite skinny. You see that? He's quite thin. He's very athletic, put, the, put it that way. He's very athletic. And his coloration, his description, if you notice on him, um, rat snakes are either going to be orangish, brownish, yellow, with a pattern of really, really large red. Can you see the red, the red blotches of pattern? And it, the red blotches have actually got black, keep still, mister, <laughs> black outline. So that's kind of the description. Now, that's on his back. Did anybody notice his belly? Look at this, guys. Whoa, isn't that a cool marking? Those are so cool, aren't they? Those colorations. Did you, when, you, when I showed you that, did, did anybody think of anything really cool? I'm gonna show you a picture here. What about this? Anybody think about, whoops, it's, it's on a fl flippy thing. Okay, can you guys see that? That's Indian corn. What do you think? Maybe there's, there's actually some superstitions or maybe there's um, maybe things that say that maybe this is why he got his name, Corn Snake, because he looks kind of like the Indian corn husks, which is really cool. So, we absolutely love this little animal ambassador at the Marine Science Center, and he is just a really great addition to our education team to teach people about the importance of snakes in our environment. And the reason why snakes are so important, because they do have a place in the food chain. Depending, it doesn't matter really what your, what your thoughts are about snakes. Just know that they, uh, to have that really, really good understanding of, of why we need snakes in the environment. So, he, look at him. Can you see how he's wrapping around me? He is a constrictor. And a constrictor means that when he finds food, he will first grab it with his mouth, and then he's, he's warm today, so he's actually moving around a lot. So he'll grab the food with his mouth, and everything, he has, he has teeth, like you and I, and they're pretty, pretty amazing. So he'll grab it with his kind of fangish teeth like this, um, to hold it straight, to hold it, and then he'll squeeze his prey, and he loves to eat um, little rodents, which would be mice and rats, he loves little lizards and maybe bird eggs and maybe a little bird in the wild. We feed him his favorite food with us. He gets fed once a week and he loves his little pinkies. That's his favorite food with us. And um, so he's going to grab with, those, with that mouth and he's gonna hold it and then he's gonna take the, the um, prey, the item that he's eating, a little rodent, and he's going to swallow it head first. And he's gonna eat the whole thing. He's gonna eat all of it which is pretty amazing. You and me, like we were saying the other day, we can't digest bones, can we? Um, so, but he can, when he eats his food, he's going to eat everything, the fur, the feather, everything, all the bones. He has very strong acid in his stomach, so snakes can digest and digest the bones and liquefy it, so when they poop, one, it smells pretty bad, Ooh. and um, he's gonna utilize his food that way. So. Cornelius, it usually takes him a couple of days to digest, 
We love him. Look at that. <laughs> He's great, isn't he? I know. So, what do you notice about him? What's he doing? Can you guys see him sticking out his tongue? Can you see that? Let's hold him and see if we can see it. <gasps> there you go. Look at that. Wow. Snakes. Unlike you and I, we use our nose to smell things, don't we? But he uses his tongue to kind of smell. And what he's doing is he's sticking out his tongue and he's tasting me with his tongue because everybody has got what they call pheromones. Pheromones is our individual scent. It's kind of like when mommy puts perfume on or when daddy puts his aftershave and you go, oh, you smell really good. Snakes, they can taste you and they can say oh do you know what that shell i don't eat shell like i'm gonna go and look over here for a little mouse or a rat and if you notice his tongue is shaped like this because then the stronger taste he's gonna go oh it's over here that big rat's over there so he's gonna know where to go and get his food which is pretty cool isn't it so you are amazing so if we had a staring contest with him can you guys see him right there who do you think is going to win? He'll win every time. He doesn't blink. He doesn't have eyelids like you and I. So you're going to lose a staring contest with a snake every time. The, the one thing I was going to tell you guys, when you find a snake in the wild, the best thing to do is just leave him alone. Let everybody know. So whoever you're with, you'll say, snake. And then everybody can stand still and let him go. You don't usually want to pick them up in the wild because you don't know if he's a venomous snake or non-venomous, so you have to be very careful. And even those non-venomous ones, remember we said he has a, a mouth, so they can start striking, which means that they're trying to protect themselves. So you just want to be very, very, very careful. Um, but he's been with us uh, his whole life. He was born in captivity, and so he's very used to being handled and he's very used to being an educator for the Science Center to teach you guys about snakes. Now, lifespan in the wilds, maybe up to about eight years. With us here at the Marine Science Center, he will probably live double that, twice as long, because there's no threats to him. He doesn't, he has food every week. We feed him every week, so he gets his food. And uh, he has a lovely enclosure to, to um, stay in. And he gets lots of, um, interactions and enrichment with the, with the public and bring him out. Do you guys see who's behind me over here? Did anybody see Toby sticking out? I know that a lot of you have met Toby before. He's our pine snake. And um, Toby's still on red because do you know what he just did today? Yes, you got it. He pooped. <laughs> and it was a big one too. So we got it out. We're letting him kind of just have a day. And then maybe tomorrow we'll get him out. How do you think? Should we do that? I love it. Um, all right. I, oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of talking because I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. So, you know what? Um, I don't even know where I put them. But yes, petrified of snakes. That's okay to be like that. This is why this is a good um, place to see him through the, through the video. Excuse me, guys. Um, so, it's good to be able to watch him through here and know that I'm, I'm very proud of you even, even coming on to watch him. <laughs> That's great. So, Let's go back to this little beautiful corn snake. Um, we call him Cornelius, or Corny for short, and um, red rat snakes. Now, let's see. They are, all these animals have these scientific names, and I really struggle with them. I'm, I'm still learning too. Pantherophis. Pantherophis. Gutatus. You guys will have to tell me if I said that right or wrong. I don't know. My English accent sounds funny too, but that is the scientific name um, of these uh, snakes. It is a reptile, as we say. It's cold-blooded. So a lot of the times when you're, when you're actually finding snakes, you might see them on the roads because with it being what we call ectothermic, ooh, that's a great word. That's a word to go look up. They're going to... Um, try and warm themselves up and the best place for them to do that sometimes is on that nice warm tarmac in the middle of the road so one of the threats to them is being hit by motor vehicles by cars so we have to be on the lookout and make sure in the warmest parts of the day you might be able to see a snake sunning himself on a rock or in the middle of the road so just be be um, aware and try and avoid them they are what we call diurnal hunters. Now, diurnal is a really good word, isn't it? Again, diurnal means dusk and dawn. 
So dawn is when it, we first start waking up and, and the light starts coming into the world. And dusk is when the, the sun is going down and then we're going into nightfall. Do you know why this little guy would be a diurnal creature? Do you remember what we said he loves to eat? Little lizards and uh, little rodents. Those are the times when a lot of those things are out and about foraging. So that's why he's gonna be able to go and find his food at those times of, of the day. Hello, beautiful. Do you remember I was telling you about his eyes? If you ever see a snake and his eyes look kind of white, milky colored, it's an important thing to know that, ooh, he's getting ready to grow. And if he's going to grow, he leaves his skin behind. Has anybody ever seen any skin of a snake? I've got a few here. I'll hold it right here. So you might have found some snake skins in your gardens, which are really, look how cool that is. You can tell by the snake skin what kind of snake it is too. So this is something good to go and find out. Now, what will happen is the snake, before he leaves his skin behind and grows, his eyes will go white milky colored. He's not going to be able to see too well when that happens, so he's going to be more defensive. So this is definitely a time when you probably wouldn't want to interfere with the snake. So he's looking at you guys. Can you see him sticking his tongue out? He's so great. He's doing really, really well. He's uh, one of our newer additions to our family here at the Marine Science Center, so he's just getting used to doing presentations. I know, isn't they great? Um, let's see. So, do you know, he's one of the best climbing snakes, so he's a really good climber. He can climb really well, probably to go into those nests and find the eggs to eat because he loves that too. Um, he is going to be about fully grown. They can reach up to about 72 inches. That's about six feet. So if you go and ask the tallest person in your house and measure them, <laughs> maybe daddy's over six feet, so you might be able to tell how long he's going to get. Um, they're going to mature, that means they're going to be an adult between one and a half and three years old. So that's not like us, is it? We're an adult when we're about 18. Now, if this was a mummy snake, a girl or a female, which Cornelius that we know is a boy, this mummy snake would actually be mating and be breeding in the springtime. And then she's going to lay her eggs because snakes lay eggs. Now, what they'll do is they'll find a nice warm, maybe like a um, decaying mulch leaf pile, and they'll find somewhere nice and warm in the sunshine, and they'll lay their eggs in there. And a corn snake will lay between three and 40 eggs, that's all. And they're going to take about two months or 60 days to incubate. That means to get warm, because they need the sunshine, and this is why they'll lay them in that nice warm um, pile of uh, mulch, maybe sometimes. Um, they're going to need to be warm to incubate and hatch and it's got to be over 82 degrees so it's pretty neat so remember yesterday I was having trouble with that word this one's a little bit different this one is what we call oviparous oviparous and that means that they lay eggs and then the babies hatch from the eggs <laughs> there you go we're learning stuff together as we do this, which is really cool, isn't it? All right. So another threat to these guys, you would think that it would be, um, you know, habitat loss, but they actually adapt pretty well to things that are going on in the environment. One of the other things that they actually are having trouble with is when we have hurricanes in Florida and we get lots of rain. So all of those little um, mice and rats and rodents and things that they eat, they actually get displaced, so then there's not enough food for them. So that's one of the problems that they have. So it's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Uh, let's have a look. They're going to be found in, as I say, every single state in Florida, and they're going to be in the uh, pine rocklands. They're going to be in the pine hammocks. They're going to be in the mangrove forest. I'm just showing you a little bit closer to him and how cool he is. Look at that. So we know he's a reptile. Hey guys, do reptiles have skin like you and me? Can you feel your skin right now? Does it feel like reptilian? <laughs> Mine needs a little bit of moisture, I think. So, um, no, we don't have scales like reptiles, do we? We have skin. So you might be asking yourself, hey Shell, 
what does he feel like? Because he's actually got smooth scales and they're very, very smooth when we, when we feel him. It it's, feels so amazing. So what I want you guys to do to get the best feel of Tobias, um, not Tobias, this is Corny, Corny Snake. So ask mummies if you guys have got your reef safe sunscreen or if you don't have any of that, maybe some hand lotion or even if you don't have that, you know what else is good to do? I went and got my olive oil <laughs> and take a little bit of it, rub it into your skin and let it sit there for a minute and then feel your skin. That would be the best way I could describe how the snake feels. So make sure if you're going to use olive oil or your um, cooking oil, do it before you go in the bath tonight because you're going to be pretty slimy. <laughs> so uh, sorry mums and dads, I know it's all good, right? Okay, so he's really cool, isn't he? We love him. He's yeah, there he is. Okay. So I'm going to see if anybody had any questions. Um, let's have a look. We'll go and see on the on the thing. So we, we have Toby behind us. He is he's so active, isn't he? Because he's gotten warm as I've held him out today, and he's getting more active as we go around. Let's look on here and see if we had any more questions. Let's have a look. Bear with me. Um, Rachel is watching. Hi, Michaela. And uh, hello from Riley, North Carolina. Awesome. Uh, hi, guys. Hi, Olga. MJ's watching. We love MJ. She does all of our um, things for our Facebook. Um, and Jennifer's watching again. Hi, Jen. We miss you. She's one of our educators. Oh, Mike's watching. He's our curator. Thanks for getting us all these cool animals to show everybody. Um, let's see, uh, does she have any venom? Ooh, that was a great question. That is um, Minerva. So this snake does not have venom and that was a great question. This is a non-venomous snake. So, like I said, all snakes can bite and the bite on this guy is non-life-threatening. It's not got the venom in it. Um, there's a difference as well and I love I love how you said venom because a lot of people and, and I always think about when you're with the kids and kids know the word poisonous so when they're little you'll say oh it's a poisonous snake so they get out of the way but when you get to be old like me or older or like the kids we want to tell them the right terminology so the terminology for a snake who is um, it's non-venomous or venomous because poison we swallow and venom is injected, bitten or stung. Snake bite, bee sting. So that's kind of the, the right thing. Um, hi Margie Sack. Oh, I used to work with Margie a long time ago when I was the baker at the uh, Osteen Elementary in my other profession a long time ago. It's great to, to do all these great things. All right, let's have a look. Um, petrified, we already said that. Stephanie's watching, hi Stephanie. All right, we love Cornelius. Look how he's doing, isn't he great? He is just getting so active, so active. We're watching here in Port Orange. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks, tell your son, we're, we're happy he's watching. Um, he's gorgeous, I know, isn't he wonderful? Yes, that is Dana who was watching us and says, do you love the bottom? Look at that, yes, isn't that wonderful? He's got such an amazing coloration. Hopefully we'll take um, the pine snake out tomorrow and I'll be able to show you he's got different kinds of scales. Uh, he's being so good. I know Stephanie, isn't he? Isn't he great? Um, okay, who's this one? Christy, oh, we were there one year ago and my son was, uh, oh, that's great. We had the skin out. Yes, it's actually right behind me. Look, I got this, this is a, an 18 foot long anaconda skin and we will actually roll that out with the kids when they get here and they can all hold it it's amazing do you remember that that's great uh, let's see whoops I went around too fast here uh, hi Danielle oh Danielle hey love <laughs> Danielle's one of our girls who goes out and about in the field so she's actually coming in contact with these guys probably on a daily basis right which is wonderful all right Kristen the boys say hi hi boys Thanks for tuning in today. This is great. Uh, let's see, where are we at now? Oh, we're in New from New Jersey. Hi guys, new here. Well, welcome, we're excited. Please like and share us and we'll get the word out. We'll do some great, some great stuff. Let's have a look what else have we got. Um, Jennifer, we already did Jen, let's see, okay. Uh, how old is he? 
That's Alexis asked, and she, he, she's nine. Well, we, we estimate um, Cornelius here about five years old, and we know that with us he could live about 16 years old, which is amazing, isn't it? Let's have a look. Um, see ya. We're coming to camp this summer. Yay! That's Michelle and the kids. Wonderful. <laughs> Where did Cornelius come from? So, we did not take Cornelius out of the wild. He was actually, um, it came from a reputable um, uh, breeder because we wanted to have an educational snake that was very easy to handle and very calm and, and good with the kids. So this is why we did this with him. And this is one of the other things that's actually one of the threats is illegal harvesting out of the wild. So when people go and they take these guys out of the wild, we're upsetting the balance of the, of the uh, food chain. So that's a really great, great question. Thanks for that one. Um, Jennifer, oh, hope you're enjoying it. I am, of course, you know that. And then Michaela, we already said hi to Michaela. Who else? Lily, Maddie, and Bree. Hey guys, oh my gosh, some more of my campers. I love that you're watching today. Um, we'll see you soon. And uh, Michelle is so cool. How long is he? Right. So we actually had, and um, let me see, one second. Okay. So this, and I'm going to show you, we're going to go really slowly. This was his last shedding. Are you ready? That means he left this behind. <laughs> Whoa. Can you see it? Keep going, keep going, keep going. And we, I just measured this this morning. Oh, I, my arm's not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> My arm wouldn't go high enough, guys. I measured this this morning and it was 58 uh, inches long. And uh, we know that the shedding is usually a little bit longer than the snake, but, but that's pretty good. Hi, Mo oh, hi, Morgan. Miss and love you too. I'm so proud of you doing your vet school over there. Morgan was one of my past uh, camp counselors, and it's so wonderful to see um, all of these kids growing up and, and having their careers. It, it, all right, I'm not gonna get, there you go. Let's, let's go back to this amazing snake. Do you love him? Look at that. All right, oh, <laughs> we're so excited. All right, well, I think that, I have no idea again what time it is. Let me have a look. Um, ah, 1.20. I think we're, we're at the right, uh, the right time to uh, say goodbye to you. Ooh, and you know I'm gonna ask you guys to do something, so. Today's project, I want you, if you have a pet at home, I want you to go to find your pet and um, find out lots of things um, about your pet. Um, and if you don't have a pet at home, it's okay. Find your favorite stuffed animal, because I know I have one, and mine is over there. I'm not gonna go over and get it. And um, find out all kinds of things about your, you know, work out some th information like, um, my favorite stuffed animal is my stingray and I use him to sleep with on a night because he's so soft and squishy and he makes a great pillow. So come up with a little presentation and then after dinner tonight when you're at home with whoever you're in with, being in and, and safe, do a little presentation for everybody in the family. That would be really cool. So again, be like Shell and give everybody a little bit of a smile today. All right, until tomorrow, sell you later, everybody.